Okay, now about test modality. So this is about how you want to take the test. Do you want to take it remotely? Do you want to take it in person? So there are different options. It's important to decide what's your comfort zone, what kind of environment you would work the best. Right? We all have different preferences. So for me, I like to take it in person, but I know a lot of my students like to take the exam online. Ultimately, you want to check with the school you're applying for to see what options they provide. Because even if you like to take it online, if that school says, no, for us, we only accept these tests and take it in person, that it doesn't matter, right? You have to take it in person. So it's very, very important to check with specific schools to see what their policies are. If you look at the ATI website, there are quite a few options. You can take these online. Uh, it can be proctored by ATI, right? There's option for that. You have to use ATI's proctoring tool to be able to do that. Or you can take the test, which is proctored by the institution that you're applying for. So that's another option. If you choose to take the test in person, I would say just almost all the schools, they're will be an in-person option. And that's, you know, with that institution, with that screen center at the school. If not, you can try to find a PSI testing center where in the city where you live, in the area where you live, if the institution is not an option. That's an alternative you can um, think about, right? Take the test with the PSI center. Now, I don't know how much they charge. So if you have... Both options, maybe compare the costs, see, you know, which location is easier to get in and get out. Maybe that's some of the factors that you want to think about when you choose a physical location. Now, talking about the different modalities, do you want to take tests in person or remote? You know yourself the best, right? So it's really just pick a method that you think will help you the best taking the test. Um, I prefer in-person tests. It's n usually it's not a familiar environment, right? Let's say you have to go to a PSI center or if you have to go to a testing center that you have never been to, it's, it's definitely not as comfortable as your home, right? Um, so that's something that a lot of people don't like. So if that's an issue for you, um, but you want to take it in person, you can you know stop by the location um, beforehand, right? Just kind of get a feel how to get to that place and you can go in the staff members there may let you you know take a quick look even if it's not a familiar environment that's not a, a huge deal breaker right you can stop by beforehand and then see what the place looks like now for those of you who are taking teas i'm sure you have taken a lot of tests in person associate with you know the college classes you're taking so if you don't mind taking the test in person I think it does have a pretty big advantage, which is that you do not need to worry about technology issues, right? Because you are there in person. If you run into any problems, there will always be staff members at the testing center, at the school building who can help you, right? So this can save a lot of headache. I can't tell you how many times when I'm in the, in the middle of a meeting and my internet just goes out. And that's a meeting that doesn't really affect my, my future, right? doesn't affect my career. But if you're taking teas and your internet goes out, just imagine that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety. So in-person will always be my first choice. Um, but I understand that some students um, may not have the luxury to have a physical location to take the test, or maybe they function better, a lot better when they take the test remotely, you know, in their house or, you know, at a very quiet location, you know, they're less anxious. If you're thinking about a remote test, just be aware that you may run into, you know, potential problems with their computers or internet connection uh, or, you know, the remote proctoring tool. But, you know, it's a small chance. So if you think, so if you think everything will be fine, then, you know, remote might not be a bad option if you get very, very anxious uh, when you're, you know, physically at a testing center. Now, in terms of what locations are accepted by the school, 
it's very important to check with the school. They have different options. They have recommendations. So the school may say, okay, you can take the test at our institution. That's fine. Or you do have the uh, option to take the test at a PSI center. So know your options and then pick one that you like the most. Um, here's an example from UNC Wilmington. I took a screenshot of the information on their website. Now let's look at the bottom first because this is related to what we're talking about. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is that for UNC Wilmington, if you are taking the test at a non-college testing center, like a PSI center, then you have to send your test results to UNC Wilmington via ATI test prior to the end of the test administration period. And there is a cost of $27 associated with it to have your T's sent to UNC. There are a couple of hassles there. If you choose not to take the test at the UNCW testing center, you have to you know, do something to send your test to UNCW and then you have to pay a little fee. So that's, that's something to be aware of, right? Maybe it's better to take the test at a UNCW testing center so you don't have to, you know, jump through all these hoops. Now, another uh, interesting information I just want to mention real quick is that for UNC Wilmington, your T score is valid for five years, which is a quite a long time, right? This is not a very common. Uh, for a lot of other schools, your T score is valid for a much shorter time. So check the school you're applying for. I keep saying this, but each school has a very specific policies. So it's definitely helpful to know uh, what your school's policy is around T's. So again, I can't emphasize enough. Okay, check what the school you're applying for and know all their instructions and all their policies. Now, a lot of students, whether, you know, maybe they don't want to, they're shy, or they just don't feel like doing this, but I think it's a good idea to always talk to the TEAS coordinator at the school you're applying for and look for recommendations, right? For example, you can ask the coordinator, ask for their recommendations on, you know, how to take the test, where to take the test, right? If there are multiple locations, which location is what better? For example, maybe less people take tests there, so it's easier to get an appointment. Or maybe um, that location has less traffic, so it's easier for you to get there in the morning. Or you can ask, are you aware of a lot of students taking the test remotely? Um, are they, you know, have they experienced a lot of, you know, technology trouble? Um, and how does, you know, the proctoring tool work? Um, is it hard to get it to work, you know, things like that. That's the information that the TEAS program at the school you're applying for can provide. So always, you know, take a few minutes to, to talk to people to get some information. They know a lot, right? Because they have seen so many students, you know, going through the application process. So they are very knowledgeable about the test, about the process. Okay, next, we're going to talk about the ID requirement. Now, some of you are going to think it's too early to talk about ID requirement, right? You know, we're not going to take the test for quite a while. So why do we need to know this? And what I was thinking is that there are specific requirements as to what kind of uh, ID that you can provide when you take the test. So if you don't have any of these, it's time to apply for one. A few examples of accepted forms of ID include current and valid passport, driver's license. If your driver's license is going to expire, you know, by the time you take the T's test, maybe you want to renew your driver's license. And same thing for state ID card. So check the expiration date and make sure everything is good when you take your T's test. And some of you may not have any form of a government-issued ID. So if you don't, it's time to apply for one and make sure there is enough time between when you apply for an ID to when you take T's, right? Because with the COVID, um, a lot of the government work has been backed up. So it may take a little bit longer to get an ID. 
What you should not do is on the test day, bring a digital copy of your ID or a photo of the ID. Bring the physical actual ID to the test. If you take a photo of your ID and then show them the photo, that's not going to work. They have to see the real ID. Now, this is important. This is related to registration. When you register for T's, make sure the name you put in the registration is the same as the name on your ID. So when you register for T's, don't use your nickname. Don't use your alternative name. Use the name that's actually printed on your government issued ID. So that's a very important. If the names do not match, you're going to have a problem. Okay, so keep that in mind in terms of ID requirement.